Okay, so now let's talk about meta supervision because meta supervision is the antidote that I offer that is the solution to this problem. Meta supervision is naming with the person that you're supervising that you're supervising. Right? So you say, Hey, Johnson, don't forget that uh, TPS report on Monday. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot. Thanks for the reminder. Now, there's a moment right there. There's a choice point. There's a choice point. Supervision would be, no problem, Johnson. I'm here to help. Right? Right. That's the manager pretending what they just did there was management and so is their job. What I would like them to say to themselves in that moment is, "Hmm, I just supervised, which is something I'm willing to do on the way to not having to supervise because it's not really my job, ultimately. So let me pull him aside and say, Johnson, I appreciate your appreciation there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with reminding you about things from time to time. But let's talk about how you dropped that ball. How did you forget it? Because in that moment, I had to supervise you. And I don't like doing that. There's better uses of my time. Ultimately, you don't probably like it either. You don't like the feeling of me looking over your shoulder. Although I know in another way, it's probably nice to have the feeling of if you do drop a ball, I'll be there to catch it. But that's not really what we do here. I want you to... to Mature as a professional so much that you don't need anyone to remind you of anything. Because one day I know you want to be an X and you want to run a Y business or whatever their goals are. And I'll tell you something. You want to be a manager, you want to be a business owner, you want to be uh, whatever it is. Being able to hold your responsibilities and not drop balls is a really important part of that. I can help you get there. But it starts with this lesson. Don't ever thank me for a reminder again. Because if I have to remind you, I'm supervising you. And if I'm supervising you, it means you're being less than you could be. And you shouldn't be happy about that. Now, maybe I wouldn't do it quite as heavy as that. But that's just what came through in the moment. That's what Johnson needed. Those DPS reports. He's always dropping those, you know? You can dial it in, whatever. Maybe that's the second or third time I reminded him about him, you know, that month or whatever. Joseph, yeah, please. I just had a question. I, I'm uh, in a position where I'm going to be setting up new relationships and, i.e., onboarding people into my environment. And so I have this vision right now of, you know, sitting down and explaining. This is, you know, obviously the rules of the game as you're yep. familiar. And this is part of that. So I, I was. That's where my head was going. Is that that it's got to be so much more difficult to speak with someone about your supervise having supervised them in the moment versus setting it up right the first time. So there's definitely pros and cons to either. I mean, you know, it's best to start off on quote the right foot. But if you're changing the game on someone, at least you have an established relationship with them. And then, you know, what I would recommend is you just be totally honest with them. It's like, you know what? I learned something about my management style and I haven't been serving you. I haven't been serving you because I've been too willing to supervise you and remind you of stuff and follow up with you about things that are really yours to own. And in that way, just, you know, if we put sort of a, a, a fine point on it, I've been treating you like a child because I know you don't need those kinds of reminders. Maybe you do today, but 30 to 60 days from now, let's see if you don't. I want to stop supervising you because I think you're that awesome. And here's some examples of how awesome you are and yada, yada, yada. You can't do that with someone you haven't worked with, right? So there's there's good and bad. But uh, best bring up the idea of supervision in the hiring process before you even hire them. You know, so that. You're not because uh, many people will go their whole life wanting to be supervised. They just want to be told what to do. Hey, I get it, and I want everything to taste like chocolate cake. You know, being told what to do everywhere in your life is really easy, 
except for the part of you that will resent them and hate them for making you do all the stuff. But you, that's both, right? You end up with both. So that's really what you're circumventing here is the ease, the relative ease for an employee to just say, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And there's this great scene, you know, the TPS report is obviously a uh, office space reference, uh, the Mike Judge film. But I love the moment where um, Jennifer Aniston is uh, talking to her boss at that pizza place about the number of pieces of flair that she's supposed to be wearing, little buttons and crap. And, uh, and, she's, and, and he's like doing his best. He's a very earnest guy. And he, he wants her to wear more flair. And she's wearing the minimum number of pieces of flair that are required. And, and, and she's like, you want me to wear more flair? And he's like, I, I want you to want to wear more flair. And, and like, that's in some ways, that's the essence of every management problem. Because the, the, the employee, is, because of their work conditioning, is doing the minimum to get by. So they're just making a silly example. You have to wear seven pieces of flair. So she's like, fine, I'll wear the seven pieces of flair. But by only wearing seven pieces of flair, She's giving a middle finger to management saying, fine, you can control me, but I'm not going over the top. And then it's contrasted with this other employee there who's covered in flair and is way too excited. And she resents him and thinks he's an idiot, which in some ways he is. <laughs> but he's being an employee excellently, right? And so the manager is so frustrated because he's like, no, I, I want you to want to wear more flair. And he doesn't know how to do that. And of course, the answer is, Access self interest, you know, and in what way is it in our best interest? That's what he doesn't do. So, if you haven't seen the movie Office Space, just about everything you need to know about business and management is probably in there. If you know how to listen for it, look right. I've seen it a dozen times. So, take your example of the friend who doesn't put gas in his car, and uh, just to use a metaphor that's not too close to me, that I can't see what I'm trying to. <laughs> You can choose to not supervise him and remind him to get gas, or you can put up with the consequences and walk home a lot or have to call an Uber or whatever you, whatever you want to do. So what's the answer? I mean, What's in the middle? Sure. Supervision is reminding them to put in gas. A staunch manager point of view would just be to walk away and let them fail. What's in the middle? What's meta supervision in that moment? Trying to get them to want to put gas in the car. <laughs> no, I don't it's a little bit more meta than that. Uh, you name the supervision. So is that telling them that you see a pattern that they run out of gas a lot? Even more meta than that, but that's well on the way. You, you, you tell them that and what has been your role? To tell them to put gas in their car and you're not going to yes. do that? Anymore? Yes, that's meta supervision. Hey, I'm noticing a pattern. You run out of gas a lot. And I'm the one who's having to remind you. How is that for you? Do you like me reminding you to put gas in your car? Interesting question. You could ask. Make, make it sort of a conversation. Maybe they're like, yeah, it's really helpful. Or maybe they're like, no, sometimes I resent you because I feel like I'm working for the man. That sucks. <laughs> Right? They could say anything, but you know they're part of it too. And then you could say, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. If it's a friend, if you're their boss, you'd say, I'm not going to spend the company's resources doing that anymore. That's not an efficient use of either of our time. So how can I help you make it so that you don't need me to do what you already know how to do? See the meta there? You're there to help. Help you get organized, share best practices for you know, calendar usage, task, recurring tasks, uh, post it on their dashboard or their forehead, whatever it would be. You're there to help. But you're, the ultimate goal is so that they don't need you anymore. And therein lies part of why most managers won't do this. Because they like being needed. Because if you're not supervising your employee, well, what good are you then? What if they don't need you? They don't need you looking over their shoulder, dotting their T's and crossing their I's, and um, you know, making sure that they I before E except after C. You know, 
that serves the self-image of many managers who want to feel helpful and needed and necessary and the mother and father hens in us. What would you do then? Well, then you'd have time to do all that work you've been avoiding. You know, metrics, visioning, your own life goals, all those things that you've said you're too busy to do because you're so busy supervising these people who act like children, dot, 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 because you've been treating them like such. Right? Meta supervision is the way for them to get free and even more scarily, you to get free. What will you do with all the time and resources you have when you're not supervising anyone? 